We had a breaking news story. Uh, I'm going to bring on our guest. Uh, you guys know, everybody knows him. Our next guest is investigative reporter, formerly of MSNBC. What? I didn't know that. <laughs> Uh, I knew he was a uh, and and the Young Jerks. He is host of his YouTube channel, The Status Coup. He has written a revealing article for The Intercept about the corruption of the DNC and how it affected the 2020 primary. It is Jordan Sheraton. Hey, Jordan. Hey, Jimmy. Thanks for having me. All right. So uh, we cut when when this happened, when they were trying to count the vote in Iowa. We covered it. Right. And we and we said this is DNC messing around. And we got flagged. If you tried to share that story on Facebook, this is what Facebook would tell you. This is a false information in this post. Independent fact checkers at Lead Stories say this post has false information. Well, it that, and they said the false information was that the DNC had anything to do with the voting and the screw up in Iowa. And so we exposed that the guy who fact checked this works for CNN. And so, you know, it was garbage. Uh, remember, Facebook can tell you what is and what isn't news. OK, also, uh, if you need relationship advice, call the Geek Squad. Anyway, uh, Pete, here it is. By, Pete, by, by the way, the, the chief communications person for Facebook used to be with the DCCC. Of course. It's a big club and you ain't in it. So Pete, here it is. So you remember Pete Buttigieg, he claimed victory in Iowa before the results were in. Uh that was a hell of a routine he did, that claiming victory. <laughs> and But here it is. Investigator DNC was directly involved in Iowa caucus app development, countering the DNC denial. So they had this app. They developed an app. All of a sudden, they need an app to count the votes. They've been counting the votes since 1776. But all of a sudden, now we need an app. We needed to develop an app before this primary specifically. And, uh, well... Pete, well, here it is. Uh, Pete, first of all, first, Pete was the first candidate to do shady things in 2020. He's like the hipster of cheating. So <laughs> in a closed session, Iowa State Democrats meeting, members pushed for the answers of the DNC's role in the caucus debacle. And that's this is your article. So from the article, it says the Democratic National Committee refused to cooperate with investigators and was directly involved in the development process of the shadow app ahead of the 2020. Isn't it amazing, Jordan, that the DNC can just not cooperate with investigators? Hey, can we see your servers? No. Hey, can we look into this app? No. Fuck off. Isn't that kind of amazing? Well, when the chief attorney investigating was a former U.S. prosecutor appointed by President Obama, uh, yeah, they could easily not respond. I mean, most people don't realize, Jimmy, the DNC is a, a private corporation. It's not a governmental body. So they don't have any regulations that would mandate them to cooperate. But it's it's quite interesting to have an investigation where you're investigating possible uh fraud by the DNC and you don't talk to the DNC, you don't get their emails, text messages, phone calls, quite the investigation. Wow. Uh, so the the person investigating was an Obama appointee? Correct. Oh, well, that guy's not going to be biased at all. <laughs> OK, well, here it is. The DNC was directly involved in the development process, the development of the app. That's what that's what Correct. that. Yeah. Said Nicholas Klinfeld, Kleinfeld, a former federal attorney appointed by President Obama in a meeting. Kleinfeld's revelation about the committee's involvement counters the DNC's claim it made immediately after the Iowa caucuses. Back then, the DNC claimed it had absolutely no involvement in the development or coding of the shadow app, which was supposed to record and report caucus results. And they also had no involvement in the 2016 primary either, just so you know. The DNC mandated several as mandated several day delay in reporting results led Buttigieg to infamously declare victory without any actual results released, despite Sanders winning the popular vote. The mainstream media elevated the former South Bend, Indiana mayor's vic victory narrative, boosting him in the polls for the New Hampshire primary where, where Bernie still won. Now, attorneys looked at financial records and contacts between Shadow Inc. So Shadow Inc. <clears throat> is this organization that developed this app. But the Shadow Inc. is populated by a bunch of ex-like Clinton workers, right? Or, go yeah. ahead. 
veterans of Hillary Clinton's 2016 campaign well, created Shadow, and they were they were pr the primary drivers behind the app being used for the Iowa caucus. So, that's just that just doesn't seem right. That the Shadow <laughs> app would be developed by Hillary Clinton cronies. That just especially after 2016 was uh, un, was revealed to be completely fraudulent. The, the primary because Hillary Clinton was um, against the rules. I don't know if it was illegal, but it certainly was against the charter of the DNC that she was running the DNC. Why Debbie Wasserman Schultz was saying that they were neutral when, in fact, Hillary Clinton's staff and her campaign was running the DNC, meaning they were making all the decisions on what press releases got released, when the debates were, all that stuff as Hillary Clinton campaign was made. And then we've got that got revealed. And so you would think they wouldn't let the people who worked with Hillary Clinton take over the counting for the next primary. But but they did. So well, if you remember, Jimmy, it was so bad in 2016 that even Politico called it money laundering. This Hillary victory fund between Hillary Clinton's campaign, the DNC, that they were basically bending the rules to take money that was meant for the state Democratic parties and to funnel it back to Hillary Clinton's campaign. And then fast forward to 2020. I think you made the first point. Why the need for an app? Why didn't we just do it like the good old days when they just called in the results? without an issue. And as my reporting indicated, the DNC, basically uh, in this private meeting that I got details of in the Iowa State Party, the Iowa State Party members said, wait a minute, to the attorneys, your report indicates that we actually had the results on caucus night right. There was no need for a delay. It could have been reported. The results were basically essentially a tie. Uh, that's a whole nother discussion, whether you believe those numbers. But Basically, the results were Buddha judge like ahead of Bernie by like one tenth of a point, a tie. But Tom Perez stepped in to block the state party from reporting the results because Tom Perez and the DNC mandated this shadow group to create a special software two weeks before the Iowa caucus that would allow the DNC access to the real time raw numbers. You know who else gets access to the real time raw numbers? of elections, the mafia. <laughs> uh, seriously, seriously. Mex Mexican drug cartels. Like, why uh, James Zogby, who's a longtime DNC member, uh, said to me for the story, why did the DNC need the numbers? The state parties are supposed to run the elections. Why is the DNC involved with they getting the numbers? Why do they need to... Uh, bless the numbers before they could go out to the public. So there's a lot of <laughs> beyond shady things. And and that's to add in, Jimmy, remember, this wasn't in my story, but f uh, uh, crazily, for, for the first time, the Des Moines Register poll, the, the holy grail of Iowa caucus polling, gets spiked at the last minute before the caucus when the results were leaked. Bernie's in first place, Buddha judges in third place. Um, there's a lot of really shady things Frankly, the investigation for my findings was kind of a joke. I don't know how you investigate anything without speaking with the DNC. Um, the other thing is uh, in this private meeting, the attorney said, yeah, we didn't actually use any legally compulsory processes. We didn't try to obtain documents from the DNC. We didn't try to compel them for anything. This would be the equivalent of like Flint, Michigan, which I've covered a lot. Former Governor Rick Snyder telling investigators, yeah, I'm good. I'm busy. I can't I can't yeah. speak. Yeah. So it, it's it's laughable. And um, yeah, I mean, there's so, other things that I reported in the story. But bottom line, you know, we just had a ridiculous investigation into Russia, Russia for four and a half years. Criminal investigation. I think we need to have an actual criminal investigation of this because this is a state. This is the National Political Party. Uh, basically actually meddling, forget Russia and the boogeyman, the DNC actually meddled and it, it had a downstream effect. Remember, I went to New Hampshire after Iowa, we were covering a status quo. Buttigieg got a 10 point bump because of this delay uh, in reporting the results and the media propping him up as the winner of Iowa. Frankly, Bernie, as per usual, uh, I mean, I was asking Bernie's campaign, why aren't you in court right now? Why aren't you in court challenging this? Why are you just saying, oh, we won the popular vote. Let's move on. And what was the and answer? It, well, we, you know, we have the momentum. We won the popular vote. I'm like, Bernie, 
The media doesn't give a damn about the popular vote. We don't have a democracy. They're framing, I didn't say it to Bernie, I said it to his campaign. They're framing it as Pete won and he's getting a huge polling bounce. This is the same thing they did in 2016. I was on the ground covering the New York primary purge. Like at the time, we knew 100,000 voters had been purged. It came out later, 200,000. And I asked Bernie's campaign, like, why aren't you in court? There's like these election justice groups in court, but you're not in court. Like 100,000 voters were purged in Brooklyn, happens to be one of the most progressive like, right? places in America. You'd get a lot of votes there. And I was told, you know, we don't want to look like sore losers. They'll make us into sore losers. we got to look onto Pennsylvania. You know who would be in court if either of these things happen right away? Somebody Donald who wants Trump. Somebody who wanted to win. Donald Trump would be in court. Donald Trump would be. Uh, Joe Biden would be. George Bush would be. Yep. Uh, cer- certainly, certainly not Bernie Sanders. Uh, I don't know if you know the people who worked inside his campaign. I do. Uh, some of them are very nice people. None, none of them were fighters. Uh, I think uh, we. I mean, we could litigate that, but I think the ultimate problem was Bernie. He had a lot of people in his ear telling him to fight, including Nina Turner, by the way. But Nina Turner did Bernie, did tell him to fight. And, yes. And Bernie, uh, Bernie did the Bernie. Bernie, Bernie did the Bernie. No, you're only, right. It only go up to a certain line. No, you're right. It falls on. It definitely falls on Bernie. You're right. No doubt about it. Uh, well, just and here's the thing about this shadow app. Okay, I just want to show people. So the shadow app invented by Hillary Clinton cabal, right? So to count the votes in Iowa, right? The most important. So Pete Buttigieg campaign gave Shadow Inc. a bunch of money as so they could work for them. So Shadow Inc., who developed the app that's going to be counting the votes, they're also getting a, sh- a shit ton of money from Pete Buttigieg. That seems like a conflict of interest. Uh, because it is. That doesn't seem like it is. Because It is a conflict of interest. So Pete Buttigieg was giving the app developer a shit ton of uh, money for, uh, to run their text messaging software. And I don't know if you remember this. I'm going to play it again. But Pete Buttigieg declared victory. And then after he declared victory, you think you would want to go out to the media and pump it up and talk about how great your victory was. And now we're on the New Hampshire and let's win there. And this is the great the people really spoke. But he start. He's gonna. But he knows he's gonna face reporters who are gonna have actual questions about the fuckery that's happening. And so this. Watch this guy's face when he walks out of here. I have never seen anything like this. People like to say that Michelle Bachman does crazy stuff, or or Louis Gohmert, or Sarah Palin does weird crazy. This is the all time craziest thing I've ever seen in politics. A guy just won the Iowa primary. He go walks out to face the press, and this is what he does. To declare a victory How do you feel Iowa about Iowa? Night? How do you feel? You said victorious last night. You think that's too early? You feel like, feel like your numbers are going well? What? It's like a perp walk. It's like, ah. yeah. And if you look right back here, if you look at the back of his head, that's where they see that dent. That's where the on off switch in it is for his autonomous, this autonomous. <laughs> that's where they put the on off switch. <laughs> You didn't know it. They forgot to click in him to talk. And so they, he just walked. That is the weirdest thing. What if you're wondering why he would do this? If you're wondering why he would do this. How do you feel? You said victorious last night. You think that's too early? Or you feel like, feel like your numbers are going well. So that's the look of a guy. That's how you act when you know that the establishment is cheating on your behalf. That's what that is. No one's ever did a walk like that in the history of politics after they won a primary. And he didn't want to say anything, do anything, because he knows they just cheated for him. And they told him, keep your fucking mouth shut and go to New Hampshire. We're going to have the press report it that you won. We're going to pump you up and we're going to get you in New Hampshire. And they did. That all happened. And they did pump him up a 10 point bump, like you said. Uh, So that's what that is. You're like, why would he do that? He's doing that because that's how he looks when he knows he's pulling a scam. That's the look of a guy who knows he's pulling a scam. And that's what he was doing. Pa- Biden selects Pete Buttigieg as transportation secretary. So now you know what he got for dropping out of the race before Super Tuesday and throwing his weight behind Joe Biden. Barack Obama engineered this to happen. And that's what he got for doing that. Uh, that so is that? Go ahead. By the way, I mean, I was in South Bend. I actually saw what this man did to this community. I mean, he was a horrible beer. It, it literally he bulldozed a thousand homes in a thousand days in black and brown communities. It's a sea of vacant lots. 
And I also found out that he actually paid his administration paid black owned businesses to go down the street outside of South Bend to get rid of black owned businesses. Wow. And this is the Cub Scout that uh, Joe Biden did a press conference with saying he reminds me of my son, Bo. Um, <laughs> he's he's a bad, bad, bad guy. And as early as 2011, by the way, when Obama was in there, they were already grooming Buddha judge. But I think to me, what my story shows is the bigger issue. Listen, we could talk about a lot of things. Uh, I'm all for force the vote. I'm with you. I'm all for a, a lot of these other things. But if you can't actually guarantee free and fair elections, then all of this other stuff is kind of moot. I mean, what's going to happen in 2024? Let's just throw out a name, Nina Turner against incumbent Kamala Harris. If the DNC is still involved, which by all counts, they will be. We are they. We are allowing, uh, uh, literally, I was in Iowa for 2020. You had thousands and thousands of people in January descend from all over the country and the world. I met volunteers from other countries that came in to knock on doors for Bernie Sanders in Iowa. Not to mention how many hardworking working class people gave their money. Yeah. So this is election fraud. I, I found the election fraud. This is it. And if you can't, the DNC should not be involved with elections. Frankly, we should have one uniform federal election standard, not this mishmash state to state. Mm -hmm. But the Democratic Party, frankly, I mean, they said in court there was there was a DNC fraud lawsuit. Their lawyer said, yeah, technically we're allowed to go in the back room, smoke cigars and, and pick the winner. So people are being defrauded, whether it's progressives who have volunteered, even the other candidates. Can you imagine for, for can you just imagine for a second if the RNC would have stopped <laughs> Iowa from reporting the results uh, and there was a weeks long delay, how the media would have pummeled them. But because it was the Democratic Party and it hurt Biden, uh, hurt Bernie, they didn't care. So it, it's it's extremely this is I think it's beyond fraud, frankly. I think there, this this is criminal because this is a private corporation, the DNC, defrauding uh, donors, defrauding volunteers. Um, and yeah, I don't think you're going to have, uh, I don't want to tell people not to participate, not to volunteer, not to donate, but um, this is now two elections, two primaries. It wasn't just Iowa. There was other shenanigans going on in other states. Super Tuesday, California, they did a whole lot of fuckery to shrink Bernie's lead. Um, and for not just the actual fraud, but this investigation was a farce. You have a U.S. attorney appointed by Obama doing it. They don't talk to the DNC. The DNC gets to basically stonewall them. The, the, uh, my, my report also indicates that the Iowa State Party, literally it was leaked to Politico by the DNC before they could even read the report. The DNC got it before the Iowa State Party got it. So it, it's all very fraudulent. And um, yeah, I think progressives have a lot on their plate, but I think we need to... Uh, really focus on accountability, uh, not just for the DNC, but the whole Democratic Party. Well, you know, but Jordan, people now e even, didn't I just see somebody, who did I see a prominent lefty tweet out that no, Bernie wasn't cheated in 2016? I just saw somebody tweet that out. I'm like, what the fuck? Was we, it Jank Uger? I think it was. Oh, was that who it was? I don't know. I, I, oh, I don't know. Oh, I, I, I don't know. But um, I be, I'm like, what is going on? What is this revisionist history? Donna Brazil wrote a freaking, I saw the article in the whatever, Politico, I don't know where she wrote that big article about how, how she found the contract and Hillary Clinton and the DNC, they, she was running it. It was illegal. Well, it was against the rules. I don't know, I guess not illegal, but it's against the freaking rules. It's certainly fraud against the donors to the DN, to Democratic National Committee or Democratic Party. So uh, what? that is just nuts that people, so the weird thing is, is that Bernie never made them do anything about that. Once that got revealed, Bernie didn't want to be seen as a, uh, again, he's just weak. He's just a weak, feckless. He's not a leader. He's weak and feckless, and he doesn't fight when he's supposed to, because if he would have fought then, then maybe this wouldn't have happened in 2020. But again, they were not made to pay a price for their cheating in 2016, and they didn't change the process at all. And not, there was no transparency. Bernie didn't demand transparency. He didn't demand anything. And so consequently, they cheated again in 2016. And so if you don't have a leader willing to fight, you're not going to get anything. 
Hey, everybody, this is the part where I tell you where all our live shows are, but there aren't any. And then this is why I tell you we join our premium program and get extra content, but nobody's got a fucking job. So just enjoy the video.